it's density plus the flow, uh, not uh, the regular low density flow, but this is solid density flow to astrophysical plasma flows. Um, we use uh, high energy lasers to study hydrodynamic instabilities and in, uh, material mixing or interpenetrating in three very unique uh, regimes. So I will talk about three experiments uh, today. Uh, we do a lot more experiments, but uh, 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 three experiments today. One is Rayleigh-Taylor instability and a mixing in a solid state. I'm sorry, uh, let me try to get used to it with the remote. Uh, uh, flows relevant to planetary uh, formation and uh, meteor impact dynamics. Basically, we are using Rayleigh-Taylor instability to study the material threats. Uh, second topic of today is uh, a radiative shock stabilized uh, Rayleigh-Taylor instability, which may be relevant to supernova dynamics. Uh, this is the 2D simulation of such a case. Uh, top is Rayleigh-Taylor instability under a very high radiation environment versus the classical Rayleigh-Taylor environment. You can see the Rayleigh Taylor is uh, very much suppressed uh, under a high radiation environment. So we try to verify whether this is the case or not in experimentally. The third case is actually plasma interpenetrating cases. Uh, that is the Weibel instability mediated plasma mixing in high velocity interpenetrating plasma flows, uh, which is uh, relevant to astrophysical collision and shock formation. Uh, this is the 3D simulation of the magnetic field map when the two plasma flows go each other and are creating uh, these viable instabilities mm -hmm. and um, as well as a magnetic field. As, as you can see, this is a very turbulent nature and uh, it's been seen and we are trying to experimentally verify uh, this is the case or not. So we use uh, the o omega and the NIP lasers uh, to do these uh, high energy density experiments. Uh, omega laser is in um, University of Rochester in New, New York, USA. Uh, it has uh, 60 beams of the laser uh, converging into the spherical geometry, which is about uh, three, millimeter, three meters of a diameter of the target chamber. Uh, it has up to about 30 kilojoules of the laser. Right next to it is Omega EP, which is the four uh, different beam facility, same size of the target chamber of the three meter, and it has about five kilojoules of the laser, but two of the, this beam can uh, turn into short pulse laser, which is uh, up to 10 to the 20 watts per square centimeter of intensity. So that's a very unique. Now we do the experiments on the National Ignition Facility, which is uh, located in Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in uh, California. We have uh, 192 beams, uh, creating about up to two megajoules of the laser energy in three omega converging into the 10 meter target chamber. Uh, this uh, picture so is not really scaled. Actually, the laser bay alone is a three football field and uh, to create the two megajoules of the laser. So this uh, uh, facility has been of operation since about 2009 and uh, we've been doing the targeted physics experiments. So the first to topic is a strength. Uh, Rayleigh-Taylor instability and mixing uh, in solid state plastic flow can be used to infer material strengths. So what's the material strengths? Uh, to give you just a definition of a strengths, strengths is the, literally the, the resistance to deformation. So when you apply the shear stress onto the material, the material experiences the resistance against this um, uh, stress. And then that can be defined as a uh, strain, which is the deformation amount over the unit length. So strong means that small deformation uh, for a, a large applied um, uh, shear stress. And uh, this is a macroscopic phenomena, but then uh, you can go back down to the very fundamental unit of the mac microscopic view, which is the, there's a dislocations, and then uh, they try to glide along the lattice plane, and then how well they play, basically uh, the, their generation, how many of them uh, are there are, versus and how fast they move uh, can determine the material strengths. So we are trying to determine uh, all these uh, material strengths uh, using high power lasers. Let's go to the next slide. And uh, of course there are many models, of course, just like any of the theory and the models exist, but the strengths cases are more of the um, phenomenological model 
and um, uh, very little known is a high pressure and a high strain rate cases. So there is a typical of the uh, parameters of pressure and a temperature and a strain, uh, strain rates. And uh, there is a um, conventional model of uh, steinberg Guinan and uh, PTW models exist, but they are basically experimental mock-up and then they try to fit the experimental uh, parameters at the low pressure. Uh, these days, uh, we uh, developed a new co uh, model called the LMS multi-scale model, which is starts with the fundamental atomic uh, uh, equation of a state and uh, potentials, uh, and then getting into the dislocation mobility, and then getting into the uh, dislocation dynamics, and then uh, getting into the continuum methods. And then all these things were basically physics-based and uh, no really phenomenological model. But all these models are known at the very low pressure and a low strain rate, but then we wanted to get into the high pressure and high strain rate. So that's where the laser experiments comes in. Uh, laser experiments can reach high pressure, basically. The, uh, just like a, a Hopkins bar, they are very low pressure. So we started this experiment on omega and a NIFA using Rayleigh Taylor instability uh, properties uh, to infer dynamic flow stress. So as you can see, uh, probably in this community, it's very familiar with the uh, Rayleigh-Taylor uh, instability. In a classical, there's a low density goes to the high density, and then uh, classical growth is uh, well defined uh, by Rayleigh-Taylor equation. However, if this material happened to have a uh, strength, then it will be uh, uh, the Rayleigh-Taylor uh, growth will be suppressed. So uh, we are designing this experiment uh, with a pre-imposed sine wave. And then uh, we try to uh, measure the, weight, the uh, growth amount by the radiography technique. And this is the one example. Basically, we give the very thin um, X-ray source and I try to measure the, the growth amount of the, this in this case was a tantalum sample, which is the, in a solid state. So that's how our experiment works. And then this is actual NIF experimental configuration, which is uh, sitting in a horum of the 10, centim uh, 10 uh, millimeter by 13 millimeter. Target uh, ripple sample is uh, mounted on the side of the package. The whole thing is uh, 40 millimeter, uh, which is uh, quite small. But then uh, this uh, uh, horum is uh, driven uh, with uh, up to about 200 uh, kilojoules of the laser energy. And uh, we uh, accelerate the sample. We try to measure the growth amount of this uh, sample by uh, X-ray radiography technique. Um, so this is uh, how whole entire analysis works. This is actually our set of the data. The ripples are um, made on a tantalum sample in this case. Uh, we uh, prescribe a different recipes trying to reduce the more, uh, induce the more information. We have the uh, knife edge trying to measure the spatial resolution. We have uh, steps on the sample trying to calibrate uh, our radiometric unit into the absolute height. And then we also measure the initial sample before it goes. And then we uh, come up with what we call a gross factor, which is a driven ripple amount over the initial ripple, uh, amount over the spatial resolution. And uh, we've been conducting this experiment on uh, both uh, omega and uh, NIP. And then we uh, measure, we call it gross factor. This is uh, the omega uh, condition at the peak pressure of uh, the uh, 1.3 uh, 130 gigapascal, which is a 1.3 uh, megabar. And then as you can see uh, that um, uh, our measurement is um, very suppressed compared to the standard uh, Rayleigh Taylor gross amount. And then of course, uh, there are many different models, uh, which is uh, uh, lots of acronym here, steinberg Einan, that's a people's name, PTW is uh, Preston Tonk Wallace, steinberg Lund model, and the LMS model is uh, the one I uh, described from the fundamental uh, way of uh, describing the strengths. Uh, our uh, data happen to match a uh, LMS model very well. And then now we begin to the experiment on doing at the NIF. Uh, this is the first uh, results from the three and a half megabar uh, case. And then again, we compare our measurements with the different um, no strength case and uh, versus uh, many different um, um, uh, uh, models again. And uh, right now, our conclusion is uh, that uh, our data uh, actually matches with the LMS model up to three and a half megabar peak pressure. 
and um, uh, in uh, both cases. And uh, so this is uh, actually quite um, you know, amazing because uh, the material behaves uh, very strong under a high pressure and a high strain rate. Um, now, this community, I uh, put together these uh, slides, is uh, uh, because uh, uh, it, how can it, what does this mean? What does all this uh, model mean? So let's think of this our uh, plus the tantalum material, which is a solid uh, matter, is a very uh, viscous material. Can we explain this one as a, as a lattice of viscosity? So uh, instead of the uh, regular uh, standard uh, Rayleigh-Taylor growth factor, we introduce over this uh, viscosity term, and uh, which is the, uh, uh, can be expressed in, in this uh, formula, and uh, this theory is developed by uh, Carnick Michaelian, and then uh, we uh, try, uh, and then we measure our uh, uh, growth factor in this. Uh, uh, expression way, and then uh, we try to see where our uh, uh, data fits in uh, dispersive curves. And then it turned out that our uh, data fits in uh, 25 points, which is an uh, incredibly strong viscous material, because uh, you name it like a water is a 10 to the minus 6 points. So 2,500 points meaning the material behaves uh, incredibly strong under high pressure and high strain rates. So that's a very, very uh, uh, exciting result. So, um, and then a vanadium was also showing very similar uh, results. So this was our uh, material strength experiments. Now, uh, the second category is uh, whether, um, um, uh, um, whether we can um, you know, probe uh, uh, the Rayleigh-Taylor instability uh, properties to understand the supernova mechanism. So most of the supernova mechanism, basically the supernova explodes, and then um, um, and then the shock goes away in the front, but then there is an interface uh, between um, uh, the high density to the low density, uh, which he, uh, can create a, a relative instability medium. So far, all the stellar media never includes uh, this um, uh, the strength effect here. And then uh, or radiation stabilization effect because uh, the radiation goes in front of it and uh, makes a really hot uh, media in front of it. And uh, does it uh, cause uh, uh, whether there is a uh, instability, uh, reduces this uh, Rayleigh Taylor instability? So we started doing this, this uh, supernova Rayleigh Taylor experiments. And uh, this will be uh, important uh, to uh, understanding the observation and then uh, evolution of the supernova. So our experiment basically trying to create the mimic of the radiation environment in front of the Rayleigh-Taylor unstable interface. So our experiment design is that we have the, we use the laser to create the high radiation environment and then our shock tube has the uh, heating medium which is the foam medium and then we have the rippled surface and then uh, we drive, and then at a certain time later, and then we use the backlighter trying to see how this uh, ripple grows under two different cases. Uh, one is that we call it high drive, very high uh, radiation temperature case, versus a uh, low drive, which is uh, the uh, cold medium uh, um, uh, places, and then trying to see whether this uh, ripple grows a uh, matter at all. And then uh, we have done uh, this experiment on, on uh, NIP. Uh, and then uh, the prediction is that we created a two different uh, environment of the radiation temperature case of the 325 EV to uh, 200 EV. And then uh, you can see the simulation shows that at the high drive, uh, it, uh, the Rayleigh-Taylor growth is uh, very much suppressed compared to the cold drive which is the uh, uh, suppression amount is uh, uh, not uh, visible. So the question now uh, in uh, this case is uh, what is the actual mechanism having this uh, Rayleigh-Taylor suppression is uh, happening? And uh, there is uh, two theories uh, happening. One, oh, so, uh, so we went on and uh, did the experiment and uh, this one is uh, the uh, low drive which is a relatively low temperature case. And then you can see uh, this is a shock front and then uh, shock front moves along as function of time. And then you can see uh, it's a little low contrast, but then you can see the ripple growth. 
and then river grows as a function of time, and then it goes uh, really growing. And then high drive, which is the uh, same interface of position, uh, and then uh, you can see even by your eye, the, river, the growth amount is already quite suppressed, meaning that it doesn't grow like uh, this uh, mushroom kind of uh, futures, and then uh, it's uh, much smaller. So the next um, uh, slide shows uh, this one much closer up look, and uh, this is the data at the low drive, meaning there's no radiation is happening in the front of this, um, um, uh, the rivers, and then it grows much higher compared to the uh, data of the high temperature of 300 dB, and then uh, we compared uh, with a crash. So we're trying to understand uh, this uh, phenomena in terms of uh, two ways, uh, basically, uh, see uh, what type of um, um, Rayleigh Taylor separation mechanism can happen. So for this uh, experiment, we, we are coming up with uh, two ways. So one is that ablation stabilization. Basically what's happening is uh, uh, it could be, uh, uh, it could have, a, sorry, it could have a very, very high temperature in front of it and uh, that makes it, uh, uh, basically the ablation happens uh, very fast and then uh, it uh, can uh, suppress the, uh, the growth. It can makes it look like a smaller growth. Or uh, basically density scaling uh, stabilization, that means uh, we have, um, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, um, different uh, density. The density uh, is uh, much lower. So Atwood number in this case is uh, much smaller. So it looks like it grows is less. So we are uh, in the mi uh, middle of uh, trying to compare of uh, these theories of the two different mechanisms of the stabilization of the Rayleigh Taylor growth and uh, trying to do the simulation and the theory. And uh, so far, our understanding is uh, ablative stabilization is a more dominating factor. And um, uh, so here is the case of showing you that uh, in front of the, our uh, ripple growth, so there's a high temperature is happening, and uh, that will uh, suppress our Rayleigh really Taylor growth. So we are preparing uh, uh, one paper is already accepted, and uh, by Nature Communication, and we are preparing another one uh, in a more uh, detail uh, describing this phenomena. Okay, so the remaining hour, the, so my third topic is uh, collisionous shocks. So. Um, um, the high Mach number plasma flow mixing is of interest to astrophysical community. Uh, basically, uh, uh, if you look at the, so sorry, sorry, this one is going uh, many different ways. So uh, we are uh, interested in a, uh, basically plasma flow mixing, how that uh, controls the collision is shock formation and uh, whether they turning into the uh, turbulent mechanism and how that creates the magnetic field in the universe. So if you look at the um, uh, uh, universe, the first of all, everybody knows that universe uh, has a very strong magnetic fields everywhere. Sorry, I'm pushing, keep pushing the wrong buttons. So if you look at the M31 uh, Milky Way, uh, there is a magnetic field uh, in the uh, core uh, to the um, uh, micro, uh, micro Tesla to all the way very, very small amount of a uh, uh, magnetic field. So the question is how this uh, magnetic field is uh, even generated. And another question in the universe is uh, the, we know that cosmic ray uh, particles can be accelerated really up to high energy. And then now uh, a big question is uh, how this uh, cosmic ray is uh, being accelerated. So the idea is uh, that uh, maybe uh, there is um, the, some kind of explosion happens and a plasma flows and then it creates the instability that traps the um, uh, ions and then that can be the mechanism of the this, uh, creation of the uh, shocks and then also acceleration of the particles. So uh, this is uh, explaining that if you have a very high uh, uh, speed uh, plasma as each other, and then uh, their uh, interaction length, which is the Coulomb mean prepass, is uh, much, much larger uh, than uh, they actually trying to meet each other and uh, create the shock. However, uh, 
just like a, it's a very analogy. I know this community is very familiar with the Rayleigh Taylor instability. Rayleigh Taylor instability is basically you have a density density differences. Whereas uh, in this case, it's a velocity differences. So two different velocities also can create a, a, a different instability, and that's a called a wival instability. And then the unique about this wival instability is so they should go through. They are very, very, very fast moving uh, plasma flows, but then uh, they uh, can uh, create an instability, and then that traps the, these uh, ions uh, moving together. And the uh, unique thing about this one is Rayleigh Taylor uh, instability makes uh, this uh, ripple growth and uh, different spikes and uh, bubbles. And uh, in this case, uh, it uh, can create uh, basically a magnetic field out of uh, kinetic energy. So that's a very unique thing about uh, this uh, phenomena. And uh, we wanted to study this one. And of course, a laser is a really great because uh, we can, um, uh, laser is the uh, platform. You can create very high velocity plasma flows. So um, we are uh, trying to make a scaled experiment. So if you look at the, another phenomenon, is if you look at the supernova, and the supernova expands the plasma very, very high speed. And then, uh, as I said, in uh, regular uh, theory, this uh, plasma should just uh, move on, and then there should be nothing. However, we see this uh, basically shock is formed, very, very thin shock is formed. So how do we uh, understand that this type of a phenomena in laboratory? And then you look at the supernova system, what happens is uh, that the Coulomb mean prepass, because of this uh, supernova explosion is a so power e event, which is a scale of about 40 light years, uh, which is uh, much, much larger than the system size, which is the supernova size, which he, uh, and then now uh, we are seeing basically the shock width created by this system is uh, very, very small. So when you look at this one into the laboratory uh, plasma physics, basically Coulomb mean prepath, uh, how they, penetrate, uh, they uh, pass through, it has to be much larger than the system, which is uh, my experimental scale size should be much larger than this instability scale length, which is, uh, in our case, we have electrostatic instability length, and then we have electromagnetic static, uh, 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 scale length. So if we can create uh, this type of uh, environment, and uh, we have uh, basically a uh, scaled experiment on uh, how we can um, um, uh, create these uh, collisionous shocks in uh, a laboratory. Um, so we uh, began this experiment in Omega first, uh, which he, uh, we have uh, about four to five kilojoules on um, simple plastic force, and then plasma is uh, creating about uh, 10 to the um, uh, nine, nine kilometers per second of the flow uh, velocity, and then uh, in the middle is the, our probing region, and then we first we had to demonstrate that uh, condition I uh, uh, explained, that um, uh, the mean prepass should be much larger than our system size, which is about nine millimeter size, uh, which has to be much, much larger than our uh, plasma instability scale length, which is uh, uh, the, the frequency, the, the, mean, the uh, instability uh, frequency length. So once we demonstrated that uh, mean prefix is uh, much uh, larger than our interaction system size, which is uh, 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 much larger than uh, the, our the instability scale length. So once we demonstrated that, we went in and um, uh, started doing the, uh, what's happening on our uh, actual uh, instable cases. So we have uh, two flows coming in, and then we decided uh, electromag this is electromagnetic nature of uh, unstable, so it's not the actual density of it. So we use proton source to probe how, what's happening in our electromagnetic scale lengths. So this is the image of as a time sequence of the very early time, and then uh, time evolves, and then you can see that very turbulent nature is uh, very clearly visible at very late time. In the beginning, uh, that's the arrival, and then uh, it uh, creates, uh, it uh, evolves and uh, develops more, and then it goes on uh, more. So. Um, um, with this, and then we are uh, saying that um, uh, basically this is uh, so clear. Uh, uh, the viable implementation was uh, predicted about 1950s, and then uh, this uh, our set of the experiment was the first uh, experiment that clearly uh, demonstrated viable filaments actually exist. 
So we uh, accumulate uh, these uh, filaments and then we measure the, the basically uh, the conversion from uh, kinetic energy to the magnetic energy is about 1% level, which is uh, quite significant. So that's uh, how the universe is uh, magnetized. So if you see the supernova explosion and then uh, the, there's a uh, magnetic fields exist everywhere and then uh, the basically the, the most fundamental mechanism how creates from kinetic energy to the magnetic mechanism uh, we think it's a Weibel mechanism, and we demonstrated it in the laboratory. So that's uh, the uh, Weibel stability. And then now we wanted to really create a, a shock. So we uh, began our experiment on, on omega. And um, uh, this was the omega case. And then now, uh, on a NIF, uh, I'm sorry, on omega, we used about four kilojoules of the laser on uh, each foil. But uh, on uh, NIF, now we can afford a much larger uh, laser energy, 250 kilojoules each. And then now uh, we use the same trick of uh, probing our uh, uh, the interaction region uh, with a D-helium-3 uh, backlighter the, in, in terms of a proton. And uh, what is, is there? So uh, the D-helium-3 backlighter generates the high energy uh, protons and low energy protons. And this is an example of the map. But uh, to give you our uh, quick summary, uh, this is the summary as of today as uh, how proton uh, radiography looks like. Uh, proton radiography, don't think it's uh, like a density. Think this is like a magnetic field map, how they are evolving when the plasma and the plasma interacts. And then at early time, we see the very two distinctive futures, which we think uh, that's the Beerman battery created from the target surface. And then um, uh, it evolves. And then later, the field gets much stronger. And then eventually, all the, uh, basically, because of the, uh, the field is so strong, and then we uh, uh, consider this is a possible indication of the shock formation. And um, we, by comparing this one, because of, uh, of my uh, length of this presentation, uh, I didn't include all the simulation. But we think uh, the B field strength is about three to five mega, mega gauss at the saturation. And then at the end, uh, uh, probably filaments merge and then uh, shock is formed. Uh, we have a couple of papers uh, published and then one is in preparation. So uh, um, to show you the, uh, uh, what's actually happening, and uh, this is a uh, 3D peak simulation, particle incense simulation where we use the two flows, the two plasma flows are coming from uh, each end, and then the plasma density and the velocity is uh, from our experimental measurements, and then uh, the top is the basically plasma density plot, which is uh, the, how much is over the initial. The bottom map is actually the magnetic field generated by uh, two plasma-plasma flow interaction. Uh, as you can see, the shock is uh, being formed like uh, um, about three or four times of the initial density. And the magnetic field, as you can see, uh, this one uh, in the beginning, it's a very nice and uh, wider kind of uh, simulation. But uh, they develop more and are turning into a more turbulent regime, and, uh, which uh, is the title of this conference. So there is uh, not only just a, a density turbulence, which is a lot about uh, Rayleigh Taylor, but this is a more of the magnetic field uh, turbulence being created. Uh, and then uh, you can imagine this magnetic uh, field can do a lot of uh, damage harm on the universal, uh, universal objects. So this experiment is happening. Now, uh, so more relevant to this conference is now density, I'm sorry, uh, density case, sorry. Uh, so we not only measuring the proton radiography, we also use the Thompson scattering to understand the actual density, ion density and electron density evolution. So we have done a series of the experiments. Uh, the, uh, this is the, uh, for the people who don't know, I don't have time to go all the details of Thomson scattering. But Thomson scattering measures uh, uh, the scattering of the electrons and the scattering of the ions. And then uh, by their original wavelength shift amount, we can come up with uh, electron density, ion density, and then, uh, ion temperature and the velocity. So uh, this case is a time resolving. The dispersion curve means the velocity. And then uh, when early time, they look like a nice and smooth. 
but then uh, we, uh, the later time, Thomson scaling breaks, and it looks like uh, they are uh, going back and forth between two flows. This is a one flow coming from uh, one side, and uh, this one is uh, the other flow coming in. But they are just uh, basically uh, making uh, flashing between the density. So this was a very curious uh, thing uh, to do. So we went on and did another experiment and uh, imaging Thomson scaring. And uh, this is the target. And then as you can see, it's uh, uh, evolving quite a bit. So, there is a lot of uh, turbulence going on on this, uh, even a uh, plasma interactions, and which was a uh, quite exciting results. So I will conclude my talk uh, that uh, we have uh, conducted high power laser experiments to provide unique setting to provide high energy density regime. I just explained only three cases, uh, which was uh, the material strengths under high pressure and uh, under high strain rate, uh, shows a very heavy viscous of plastic flow. Uh, second experiment was uh, or the, radi the effect of radiation on the supernova uh, instability growth case uh, indicates that um, the um, uh, radio Taylor instability can be suppressed under the influence of the ablative stabilization. That's what uh, we are still doing uh, more analysis, and so we will conclude whether uh, more dominating ablation versus the uh, density gradient. But uh, that is a significant uh, effect uh, uh, that uh, we show that radiation matters uh, on the Rayleigh Taylor growth. Um, I showed you now a completely different regime of the plasma plasma uh, uh, turbulent mixing cases, and uh, this uh, is a, a very important. Uh, uh, observation, and we are doing the laboratory experiments to uh, tie together uh, some important uh, astronomical phenomena such as shock formation and uh, particle acceleration. And um, I just covered only three, but uh, our later facilities are so uh, broad, and then there are many other experiments going on. And uh, relevant to this conference's topic, we are studying the effect of reshock, we are studying of the multimodes, we are studying the bubble mergers in a non completely nonlinear regime. So uh, it's a very, uh, very uh, uh, rich area doing the experiments of uh, studying the turbulent phenomena in uh, both the materials and the shocks. Uh, the next one is uh, talk uh, will be by Bruce Remington, and then how great is our ICEP application of this one. So thank you.